Hello, everybody. Hopefully you can hear us. Hopefully I didn't mess up the, uh, I didn't mess up the, the stream this too much this time. So if you can hear us and you know it, clap your hands. Hello. <laughs> hey, everybody. Uh, so, yeah, I've got. Oh, and I've got I got myself a uh, a neck a neck rest for my chair, which has been like life saving. So, because like, I don't know if you noticed at BlizzCon me like grabbing my shoulder all the time, but I've been like dealing with neck pain. But now, so oh, this I'm thing sorry. is uh, this thing is good. And then I also got like this this like probably overpriced Casper pillow for sitting up in bed, but it's amazing. Hey, it's just like if this it works. Yeah, that's like, yeah. And it's worth it. I mean, I'll probably save the $90 in Tylenol. So, you know. There you go. But it's, uh, it's like teardrop shaped and it's like, you know, the good Casper mattress thing. It was like 90 bucks on Black Friday, but it's like, oh my God. Like, I can actually like sit up in bed and not like, not like have my back screaming at me, which is <laughs> amazing. This we, is, well, we love... this is what you have to look forward to when you're old like me. This is this is what you have. You get excited oh, about things oh, that keep your neck problems. from hurting. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we have uh, pillows, like big wedges to set up on the bed when we like yeah. watch TV or, or read. Uh, yeah, I was skeptical, but they are nice. Yeah, that's basically what this is. It's like a it, it's kind of like a, a soft wedge. Like it's not pointy. <laughs> <laughs> it's more like it's. They call it, they said teardrop shaped, so, you know. <laughs> uh, um, oh, my apologies. This is taking longer than anticipated. No, so no worries. Bullshit things. <laughs> I mean, my, I, as, as we've already covered, my entire week has been doing bullshit things at work, so. Well, there you go. Yeah. You know, yeah. So, no, no worries. Oh, I didn't actually, like, send a message or a tweet or anything. I should do both of those things while we're while you're doing your bullshit things. Okay. I've got a rag now. Hopefully that helps. Oh, that's what you, you're still you're still in that game. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, you've got a rag. You can't lose now. That's how that works. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. It's only too bad that I don't have this set up so you could like share with the rest of the class while you're uh <laughs> while you're we're not in Discord anymore, so I can't just yeah, like switch yeah, it to yeah. you share your screen. Do like an impromptu tri stream. Uh... <laughs> with the deck that we're gonna be covering. Getting yeah. getting a few more games in on it. Um I of course have also been experimenting with um Warlock post change. It's not bad. It's oh yeah, I played the Tice deck. That didn't it's go totally well. Reasonable. Well, I didn't know someone made a list, but um it's it's very doable. I'm not sure if I like 30 or 40 cards yet. I think the the deal now is basically you can't get sidetracked by like uh going in on um the like killing them with snake like you still try and do that but it, it's not oh that i was like tice's list was a sludge list oh yeah no i did try that and it didn't go very well yeah that was that was a disaster <laughs> every person who i who has said they tried it was like it didn't go very i'm well, like tice, tice. my dude I don't, I don't know what you were doing but yeah. um it's it's great if your opponent never plays minions ever, then it's fantastic. But <laughs> unfortunately, that doesn't seem to be the way that... Like, if this was Stormwind, Chef's Kiss, 10 out of 10, would be great. But this is yeah. not Stormwind. T Tice is just built different, I guess. I don't know. Um... I'm going to try to keep the, the BG's news brisk but there are there are some interesting things to note but i won't necessarily read every single thing yeah I no i mean i think it's it's appropriate to 
cover it, but you know, uh, it's with you know some. I don't know. Perfect victory. Yeah, with not 30, all the details. Thirty life and seven armor. Nice. Yeah, I should play this deck more. Eight zero with Reno Priest, but extremely tired. Yeah, that must have taken quite a while. That's that's, that's like impressive. yeah, that's like a whole that's like a whole day commitment. <laughs> I'm impressed though. The worst is when you play a really long Reno versus Reno matchup and then you lose at the very end. Oh my god, no. My Even time. I don't want to deal with that. Like that's just yeah. like that's just a half hour of nonsense. Is I did what that see is. someone make a post of saying like one of these is not like the others, posting the stats for like the various uh, Highlander. Oh, that was Ton that was probably Tonberry, because he's yeah. been salty about about how priest performance. It's you know it's, it's the meta. It's tough. It's yeah. Out here. yeah. I mean, they can't give priest more control tools before before rotation, so I get it. But. Which which expansion was uh, Rivendare in again? The... War Rider Rivendare? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think that was March of the Lich King. That... Thematically, that seems. It might. I think it was the the mini set. So is that? So that's going to be rotating. Yeah, I would. I think so. Oh, okay. Bummer. Sorry. <laughs> I was gonna say maybe for a set meta you could actually do the thing. Maybe maybe when they bring twist back they'll do like three year three year standard and then you can do whatever you want to do. Of course there probably wouldn't be enough spells to do like Highlander of mostly spells and then Riven there. No It's like the only thing I can think of to do with that card. <laughs> yeah, oh for for Elise, yeah. Elise is just You mean awkward. other than Dust It? You know, <laughs> well, I, I mean, look, it's got a good art. I'm not gonna... Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't because I'm not a monster, but I know some people would. All right, should we do a podcast? We should do a podcast. We should do a podcast. Okay. What is um, are we still doing Audacity, or are you comfortable without now? I still need Audacity. I'm sorry. Okay, we'll still do Audacity. We'll do Audacity. So give me a second for open. opening that up. Let me just make sure that if one of you could say something. How is this? Hello, hello. hello. That is perfect. Okay. Yeah, I, I was telling Edel before you came on that apparently there's a thing to choose the input now. So I can do that just for Riverside without like messing up my whole setup. That is good. <laughs> yeah, I just need to remember to do that. But that was that was a big deal. Okay, so then um, whenever you're ready, we can clap and then uh, go ahead and get started. Good. All right. Set so, screens up. all right. Oh, I should. I actually. I know. I never started recording. It. Okay. Now, now we're recording. Okay. I did the test and I closed it. I didn't start recording again. That would have been a problem. Is okay. there a way to pop chat out? Um. Like so, it's only chat. That would be nice. I know you can do it on mobile. Uh, yeah. Um. I don't actually. Oh I yes, guess... there is oh, wait, on yeah, the on the yeah. chat settings. Pop out chat. What? Wait, where did it go? Yay! Okay, cool. Yeah, it's it's at the bottom the bottom of the my preferences section. Ah. Oh! Game changer. All right. Yeah, I'll do that too. That's so that's actually that's actually much state. better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's actually much better. Yeah, because like, then I can uh, then I can screen, have that. Screen yeah. real estate is at a premium. <laughs> yes. Recording. Yes, that is actually very good. Though I guess I could just have it as a dock in OBS, but whatever. All right. All right. We all ready? Yep. Okay. Great. Let's load up. There it is. Okay. Yes. All right. 
Perfect. Now I can see your faces and the show notes. Hey. And All right. Oh, look All at that. Right. Magic. I know. If only I need a third monitor to be able to do all that, but that's neither. I'll, I'll, and then I'm then I'm entering hat territory, and you know I have I, I, I three monitors, but this way I can continue to look at the camera. So yes. <laughs> okay. It's, take, it's taken three years. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, maybe it'll, maybe in three years I'll get there. All right, ready, three, two, one, clap. Three, two, one, clap. Starting the show in five, four, three, two. I grant you permission to speak. Shadows hide you. I am listening. Our paths converge. So good to see you. Hail to you. Never lose hope. Here, Fred Shadows. I you. It has only begun. Fight on, friend! Welcome to episode 423 of Point to the Hearthstone podcast dedicated to making the competitive side of the game more accessible to you. It is Thursday, November 30th, 2023 in the evening. Coming to you from Nomergan, Ohio, it's me, Edelweiss. From Northrend, Massachusetts, we have Wicked Good. Hi. From Teldrassil, California, we have Megesa. Hello. And from all around the world, we have you, dear listeners. As always, thank you for your kind reviews. If you would like to support the show but cannot do so monetarily, please consider leaving us a five-star review on your podcast feed of choice. Always helps people to discover the show. And yeah, we've had a couple weeks since our last show due to the American Thanksgiving break. I was very pleased to introduce my daughter to my my grandmother, her great great grandmother, it was very fun. Um, lots lots of joy to be had. Unfortunately, she's a, a smiley baby, which you know is very useful when she's preventing me from sleeping between the hours of two a.m. and six a.m. So. <laughs> That's the only reason that babies get to progress past that stage is because they're cute. Because if they would, they wouldn't make really, it that far. It's really truly a survival <laughs> instinct. I yeah, uh, it's very adaptive evolutionarily. Uh huh. Yes. Uh huh. But. So, uh, yeah, we're working on that whole sleep schedule thing. I, I still presently am the one who deals with her fussiest stage of most nights, which is between 4 a.m. and 6.30. But uh, next week, the real test begins because my wife will be going back to work on December 4th. And uh, I think ultimately it will be better for because she will be feeling better which means that i don't have to deal with her <laughs> like being under so much pressure <laughs> like it's yeah. logistically challenging in other ways i think it will be better for our relationship <laughs> 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 but uh yeah in hearthstone i have been playing so much stuff and we do have an awesome deck that we're going to cover that I think we've all been been playing a bunch of, and that's the Wire Reno Shaman. It's, I think, the most popular Shaman right now. And I was reluctant to do it because, you know, he hit rank one, and I'm a hipster. But it, it, <laughs> uh, it, really, it really is the kind of deck that I have always liked. It's, it's just that hipster piece in my brain that kind of held me back. But it's... It's got it. It's Highlander. It, I love the Reno Hero Power. There's all kinds of discoveries. I don't. I don't know. How have you two felt about this deck? Yeah, I mean, we'll talk about it more. I. I. It's been the thing I've had the most success with, and I've done the most coachings on this month too. I mean, that's been the one thing because, like, I. Well, so I on my stream on Monday, I was like on the edge of 11x, and I am no longer even close to the. <laughs> edge of 11x same same because i started running into a lot of naga demon hunters and that's supposed to be like a 55 45 matchup but i kept hitting the 45 um and i eventually got frustrated enough that i just started playing other stuff that was ill-advised and then i eventually tried to play the naga dh this was the night before the nerf and um i hate that deck 
I don't I don't like playing against it. I don't like playing with it. I just I I do not like it, Sam I am. And it like it was just amazing to me that I would get the draw and then every time I would get draw, like both sharpshooters would be in the bottom fifteen cards. Like every single time. <laughs> and if I got the sharpshooter, I would not find any other draw for the rest of the game. Like I'd get like two shots off of it, not draw the other sharpshooter, and then just be sitting like hero power passing for like five turns so uh, that did not help my rank <laughs> but uh you know i've just been kind of but that's kind of also freed me from try harding to some extent because like there's just mm -hmm. not enough time in the month so i uh i ended up going to play some uh i, I was saying right before the show right before he came on I, I was playing the excavate sift mage the 30 card one i i played some of the 40 card lists it's yeah, fun list. but it yeah, it's fun, but it just doesn't get there enough. And, like, there's just enough times where you're just sitting around, like, waiting for stuff to do. And, like, I, I don't really want to do that. And I already have enough trouble with Sif being in the bottom five cards of the deck more often than not, somehow. But uh, She's always in the bottom five cards of the deck. It's just science. Well, well no, this game... Th there, there was one game today where she was not. Because my opponent was Areno, Areno Renathal, Blood Decay. Who play who played a patchwork and missed the Sif. And then they played a Prison of Yog Saron, which played a Symphony of Sins. Did something, doesn't even matter what. I think it drew a minion that cost six less. Fine. Whatever. And then immediately played Conqueror's Banner and drew three cards, one of which was burn six cards off your opponent's deck. And of course, Sif was the sixth card from the top. And then I just decided that was an, that was enough of my lunch break, and I needed to go get back to the office. So, <laughs> yep, yeah, that was, that was enough hardstone for the <laughs> afternoon. But I, you know, I've been trying a whole bunch of stuff now that I'm not really worried about like my rank as much. Um, you know, I tried I, I tried a few different mages. I tried uh, I played some in Rage Warrior, and Rage in Rage Warrior is. Uh, mostly it, it's taking out the top end for two copies of gold panner to get more draw is the main change to it, yep. which does seem to work. Card. I mean, yeah. sometimes you coin that out and people are just like, Oh, I'm Highlander. And I don't have my, my answer right. to that on turn two. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I had a game today. Normally, you know, often you can protect it. Um, even if you can't, they had to use something on it. You drew something, it's probably fine. But if you can protect it and really get it, it's great. I mean, it's just like when you would have the peasant and snowball on it. Mm -hmm. But PSA, if you can kill it, do kill it. Like <laughs> I was facing a rainbow. That's mage. your strategy tip for the for the episode, by the way. That's that's the, all the strategy you're gonna get today. This is the only strategy today. I was facing a rainbow mage. They played the arcane worm on one. So I knew they had the deal two damage in their hand. I decide mm -hmm. to play Gold Panner anyway because I just didn't have another play. They left it up for like six turns, <laughs> killing all my other stuff, l allowing me to draw into a beautiful imbued axe board that I absolutely would not have had otherwise. I killed them on six, having drawn half my deck already. And so, yes, that is my strategy tip. Don't yeah. save... <laughs> <laughs> You're one man a deal too for something else. It kind of goes to a, a broader thing, I feel like, of don't try and overdraw your opponent. Like there are so many instances where people are like, oh, they put out an acolyte of pain. I yeah. could kill it and draw them one card this way, but they have enough cards that if I draw them the full three or four cards, they'll burn a card. And I'm just like, you're you're missing the point here. <laughs> like, <laughs> Unless you're playing Posic when they have eight cards in hand, that's fine. Like, go ahead, do that. Sure, that's right? that's but great. Like, yeah. Or 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 unless it's like I literally cannot win this matchup unless I get them to burn a key card. But there have been so many times that I've I've just watched people make me draw a bunch of cards that they didn't yeah. have to do, and I'm like. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I burned a thing or two, and and that was unfortunate. Maybe it was even something I wish I hadn't burned, but that is like so frequently, objectively yeah. wrong. Where and it's just you like, got over so it. Now I, have... draw. <laughs> I also have three cards I wouldn't have had otherwise. So yeah, <laughs> statistically, that's almost always better. Yes, that that is that is that's just science, is what that is. But yeah, 
I, uh, but I get outside of Hearthstone, I finally finished, uh, Trails of Cold Steel 1, uh, over the, over the Thanksgiving break, which is just in time for the Steam sale, so that <laughs> I was able to buy, like, all of the Trails games that I have not already bought, except for Reverie, which is, like, the one that just came out that's so far in the future that I can wait for it to go on sale another couple times before, before I need it, but, so now my, uh, my dog, my, my 14 year old is, She's ecstatic because now she gets to play the second part of the... Because she's, like... I, I really appreciate this series for having the self-confidence to end, like, a full installment of the series on a, like, straight-up, like, end of end of a season of Lost-style cliffhanger. Like, they... So, like, the first game ended on, like, a massive cliffhanger, and then it's like, okay, well, I haven't gotten the second one yet. And... I was waiting for another sale because they go on sale like every Steam sale. But that was like, I don't know, September that she played it. And then she's like, well, and then every every time anything went on sale, it seemed like the Trails in the Sky SE go on sale. Nope, not yet. No, nope, not yet. So it finally went on sale during the autumn sale. So I got it. So she's been ecstatic. And now she's like, she's like waiting for me to catch up so that she doesn't spoil me because I play much slower than she does because I'm not 14. <laughs> <laughs> and not on Thanksgiving break. So like I've been playing like an hour and a half on the on the train, you know, a day and but I'm not playing at her pace like not even close. But like they uh, like it, the the main character of of Tra Trails in the Sky games is this character named Install Bright. She is like the most delightful character in like any game that I've played. And just has like she's very very well written. And just has some of these lines that just knock me on my butt laughing sometimes. It, it, she's very, very funny. Like, there, there's, like, this one character that's, like, this womanizer. Like, he's just, like, a goofball. He's he's harmless, but he's, and he, like, tags along with the party and nobody really wants him there. But he keeps, like, just go like, inviting himself along anyway. So they're in, like, this, you know, they're, they're introducing him to somebody else who, like... Yeah, and Gene, this thing is Olivier. <laughs> he helped us out with the coup. Like, okay, <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I, I like your style. We're good. Okay, so I'm, I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying that. That'll take me. That'll take me another. I don't know month to get through that, and then back to other games in the series. But like, I, I'm. It's a lot of investment, the Trail series, but I'm very glad that I got into it. It's a good, you know, counterbalance, especially because I can't play Hearthstone on the train because you know my internet sucks on the train yeah. so it's good to have something else to you know it's it's kind of like reading a book but occasionally you get to hit things in the head with a stick so that's that's you know yeah <laughs> i've had to find like something else to play besides hearthstone even though i've been jamming a ton of hearthstone but eventually rachel was like hey can you like have something you can pause <laughs> like <laughs> for for you know for the times where She's breastfeeding. We don't know how long it's going to take. And then I'm the one who, yeah. who puts the baby to sleep. So uh, I realized that when I got the uh, PlayStation Premium or whatever, I also have access to all these games, one of which is Final Fantasy VII Remake. Oh, which... yeah. Yep. Yep. That's a yeah. good one. So, oh, my God, that game is gorgeous. It's It's weird, like, the transitions between you're just playing the game and then it does a cutscene, and like the graphics don't change because the yeah. game graphics are that good is just flawless it's uh, wow. yeah yeah i mean things have, have come yeah. such a long way and i'm pretty sure all the voice actors are the ones that were in the advent children final fantasy movie i'm oh not they may be a yeah. dork at all uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh yes of course i recognize the japanese voice actors and uh yeah it's it's so nostalgic and, and fun, but yeah. And, most and by the time that you're you done, pause by the time, anytime, no matter what, yeah. even during cutscenes. <laughs> yeah. And, and by the time that you're done with that, the, the next, the next part of it should be out, I would think, cause that's coming out in a couple months. Brilliant. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll probably take longer than a couple months to get it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yes. Cause we have having lots of Hearthstone. I have played some of the Reno Shaman. We'll talk more about that. Um, enjoy. It took, I had some trouble with it where I kept losing to other Reno decks, just like it, until I kind of figured out how to be more aggressive with it. But mm. I've had a lot of fun with it. And definitely I was playing in Rage Warrior for a while, kept running into Druids. 
and then not being able to like kill them before they got their endless taunts and there's not a lot that enrage warrior can do about endless taunts yeah so then i went back to reno shaman and it was pretty good against all the druids i will say uh, i played some rainbow mage i had a bunch of naga dh coachings which i had more success with it in the coachings than i did on my own <laughs> but definitely the key was we, we won lots of games where we didn't draw the sharpshooters. You just play your cards. The, the, the main lesson of all my coachings of it was play your cards. The versions of it now, they do have draw. If you don't draw the draw, then yeah, you're going to run out of steam. But you would have lost anyway if you don't play your cards. So play your cards. And I hope that you'll get there. And often you do. Although, again, often I did during the coachings. We had really good win rates in the coachings. And then I'd be like, I'm going to jam this. It took me forever to hit legend i decided i was going to hit it with paladin before the nerf i was like i'm going to hit this with paladin i know they're going to nerf mm. it i'm going to hit it before and i'm doing this like over thanksgiving break with my boyfriend's family being like what are you doing what is this game <laughs> what do you mean you have a podcast about this game <laughs> so i'm trying to explain of course they haven't heard of like magic the gathering or anything similar that Oof, would help explain yeah. that, what that takes away the primary yeah. crush <laughs> that's the really easy oh it's like magic the gathering but on the computer okay great no they don't know any of that stuff so it's like okay well um but everyone was was positive about it so i did eventually get there with paladin i kept getting to the final boss and then like losing three and then getting to the final boss oh. and then losing three. Yeah. And um, turns out that you shouldn't hit hard surfaces with your fists in frustration going no really dramatically because it hurts. And that's just uh -huh. also yeah. makes people worried about your well-being. So I don't recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> I did finally hit it. And then I realized, oh, because I barely played before the expansion, it didn't actually take me longer than usual to hit Legend. It just was near the end. <laughs> of the month because i didn't really oh, start yeah. trying until the 14th right so that made me feel much better and also it is it was reminding me of what you talked about with the mental game when you get really focused on i have to hit legend that just makes things yep. much less fun yeah i think yeah. i probably could have kept 10x even if i hadn't and anyway the mental health is even if i'd gone down to 9x like mental health is better but i did make it and your physical health too I, if you keep slamming your fist into the table <laughs> <laughs> that's true too so uh, i saw in the meantime i saw a snake warlock that really just but it didn't kill me just with the snake we'll talk about that in the nerfs i saw a hero power druid that got up to 19 attack for lethal Ooh. and they were getting 10 okay. armor every hero power they were using the unending swarm to bring everything back so that was how and i just wasn't i was doing rainbow mage and because they were getting 10 armor with every hero power they kept being just out of range of my sif and then just out of range so but overall been having a lot of fun with hearthstone and we have a lot of news to talk about oh oh no i forgot about the one before we go to news i forgot about the one other like ridiculous deck that i lost to on the stream on monday night oh, yes. which was this is important i it was <laughs> so I played against what I thought was an overheal priest and they got like Clim crimson clergies off of an early creation protocol and they just kept drawing and I'm like you're gonna run out of stuff what are you doing like they like I figured they were overheal priests because they hadn't really done much there were 30 cards they weren't really doing much control stuff they were just like playing funnel cakes playing flash heals you know, whatever, it's just like dr turbo drawing through their deck. And I'm like, what are you doing? Like, why, what are you looking for? And then they found it, which was Tony King of Piracy. Because they replaced their deck with mine, continued to draw, and then had all of the Thief Priest cards. So they had the one that discounts <laughs> all the cards that didn't start your deck by two. With, or, or that were copied from your opponent by two and then Harvester of Envy and um, yeah and it turns out when you're playing I was playing one of the Sif Mages uh, that when all of your cards are two less it doesn't really matter that they can't get to the fourth Excavate <laughs> because they just <laughs> they just kill you with all the other stuff and I just they just kept having stuff and I couldn't get rid of it 
And I, uh, I I just kept saying over and over throughout that game, I can't believe I'm going to lose to this nonsense. I, I can't believe it. I'm going to lose to this, and I'm very upset about it. <laughs> and I did. <laughs> so... If if you see some if you see a priest drawing like their like their life depends on it, just you might there might be a Tony at the end of it. Just saying. Anyway. Be prepared. I yeah. feel like I have to try this one time. But... Yeah. Yeah. Exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> once, right? Like that's the kind of deck you get to try it until you get it to work once and then you retire it forever because yep. that's the best it's gonna get. Uh, try it but... at bronze ten tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I can call. Uh, not that but, that actually matters because MMR. Not that it actually but, matters for your MMR, but yeah. it makes you feel better. <laughs> that, is, that is not actually the... Well, I mean, that is news you can use, but that is not the news. But this is the news. Gadgets and Gazette always gets the scoop. All right. So because Wicked is our particular Reno Shaman guru, I will be leading the news here. So we have a lot of news. The first thing, of course, was that we had patch 28.0.3, which included a bunch of changes, mostly focused on standard. So Blind Eye Sharpshooter went from a 1.5 to a 1.3. Order in the Court no longer draws a card. Otherwise, it works the same. Uh, ABJ, the always a bigger Jormunger, is now two mana instead of one mana. Notably, it does not get drawn by Trinket Tracker anymore. Uh, Defense Attorney Nathanos now gains the death rattle before triggering. So this was something that lots of people thought was a bug or it just wasn't intuitive. It was working as intended, but they decided to go with what how people thought it should work instead of how it technically worked before, which was if you... So before, if you, for example used Defense Attorney Nathanos and picked the Bovine Skeleton, the 3-3 that if it has four attack, it resummons itself. If you use Nathanos on that, he would trigger it on the actual Bovine Skeleton so nothing would happen because it has three attack mm -hmm. by default. But Nathanos, who um, he was also slightly nerfed, he went from five attack to four. Uh, but that's still four, so now if you did it on the Bovine Skeleton, he would gain the Death Rattle check against his own attack and summon a bovine skeleton. So it works. If you haven't played with this card, it now works the way you think it should work. Well, and, and, <laughs> and, and if you have played with this card, thank you for listening, Sadisi. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think what's really important here is like, it both wasn't the way you thought it would work and also it was bad. Like it actively was not... <laughs> Yeah. like not a good way for it to work because uh it it meant that you almost had these death rattle minions that normally you would want to run in this kind of deck that you couldn't or wouldn't run with defense attorney nathanos the death rattle legendary payoff because he just didn't trigger them the way that you would want to i think maybe the reason they brought his attack down is because uh the one of them makes a, a minion with stats both equal to the attack, so it would have meant a spur fan, summon, yeah. a, summon a five five and death rattle summon a five five, and they were like, maybe that should be summon a four four and death rattle summon a four four. four, four. But that's uh, the um, frost wing, and then there's also spur yeah. thing where it also matters for spur thing's attack. So yeah, right. in both cases, it was probably better for. But now you can actually do the thing, whereas before you couldn't like right. do the so, thing. Yeah, really nice quality of life change there. I mean. Aside from the fact that Reno exists and makes all of your death rattles invalid anyway, but we won't talk about that, I guess. But that's later on <laughs> in the game, right? This is happening turn six, ideally. So, uh, yeah, but, sure. Uh, yeah, the change that I had my eye on was Warlock, Azerite Snake. So I've come around on this. I was feeling pretty negative about it initially. I thought that. If they went lower than eight, the card is super dead. Uh, and I have an appreciation now, even though I still kind of wish it was eight, personally. I have an appreciation. It, they took it from drain 10 to drain seven, which means it takes the exact same number of plays to kill someone from 30 life and 35 life. So if this became a thing again, People would not be able to just 
play Renathal to not die, to, to require the opponent to have an extra play, right? Because it's the same number. You're either dealing 28 damage and have to have something else over the finish line, or you're doing that additional play to do 35. So Yeah, but also... Five is a lot of bounces. <laughs> like five is, is. five is, is like all but one of the bounces in your deck, right? Because you're that's assuming that you're playing do, two copies of both pandas plus Zola, yeah, and which I think you've you used with yeah, and and you've used all but one of those. Like that's that's a lot, and I mean it. It's gonna, but I mean also you can. Uh, you, that's not the only way you're allowed to do damage. So you could do other damage and then use that to, you know, to to yes, go over. I, I think, yeah. As it happens, occasionally, <laughs> you are able to do two damage before they start gaining armor, and you know, as long as they're not gonna heal themselves back up, then you still get to do the the four plays instead of five plays. But yeah. uh, so come around on on the, the elegance of of drain seven. Uh, it, it is more challenging. I've I've played a bunch of both a 30 card and a 40 card. I'm actually uncomfortably maybe leaning more towards the 40 card one just because really um, because it's it's just not a combo anymore, right? Like it is a nice reward that you try and bounce, but a lot of it is more for like the sustain and whittling them down than anything else. You're a Sargeras deck, <laughs> like yeah. You are you're, you're, a control you're, warlock. Your control warlock with a little extra burst is basically what you're doing right. at that point. A little burst and, and it heals still. You and, know, and that so extra can help. I can include like all the removal things I want in the forty card list. Um, I can actually have a chance against the blood decays, which I can't with the thirty card list, mm -hmm. uh, because thanks to No Hands and Bunny, and particularly No Hands, who is playing a forty card blood decay. Yeah. <laughs> um, but is still able to do two vampiric bloods because one's an ETC. Uh, that is really tough for the 30 card. But uh, at 40, I, I realized the way you have to build the deck is you're running five bounces. You just are because of the Azerite Snake. But in the matchups where that's definitely not how you're going to win, you can just bounce other things. Like yeah. imagine you, I'm you're still a Doomkin deck because you're you're so top heavy. Oh um, god, so, that's not better. Holy so crap. you you are <laughs> running, you know, greedy partner to to coin Doomkin whenever you can. Now obviously that's less consistent in the 40 card list than the 30 card list, but uh very common against aggressive decks for me to bounce Gary, right? Yeah. Just, just more trains, yes, please. Bounce Gigafin, another quality one. Uh, you know, especially because then you deny them the opportunity to get their minions back uh, via Keeper Strength or whatever. So, whereas oftentimes you would be weak to Paladin, it's actually felt pretty strong against Paladin because of those options for, um, for, for just like, nomming their board. Uh, and the Paladin nerf was pretty significant. The Paladin nerf was quite, I think, <laughs> at first I was like, we can still play Order in the Court, but maybe fewer things on the top. I don't think we play Order in the Court at all anymore. I immediately was like, yeah. okay, Purator decks now. <laughs> yeah, like, dude, yeah. like, yeah. Just, I mean, it's just, like, the, the thing about Order in the Court is that it, I think it was always supposed to be a tempo loss. Like, that yeah. was supposed to be kind of the, the cost of it. And then, so they would give you the card draw, to, you know, just to make up for the fact that you're doing something, a card that effectively says, like, you know, on your turn, do nothing, spend two mana, do nothing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, at least when you play it. And then, the, so they were giving you the card draw to counter that. The problem is that it never was a tempo loss because the cards that were at the top end are all cards, aside from the Countess, that discounted themselves, right? Yeah. So, like, Garden's Grace, Sea Giant, uh, light ray like you were never paying like uh, except for like the very first incarnation where we were doing it to get the jailer right like that yeah, it, that was like a week that was that was a week <laughs> yeah exactly but other than that it was always cards like you were never like you were playing order in the court and then you were playing that card immediately because it was probably free and like to the point where people were playing uh dry dry scale deputy 
uh, in order to get in, yeah. in order so that they could play order in the court and immediately draw like two or three gardens graces and then slam them on a minion and uh, like that's when uh, that's what like when I died from 26 from uh, from one minion that I didn't clear and because of the gardens graces I'm like okay this is this is too much right. now one other thing that came up in discord today if you are a wild enjoyer uh you no longer immediately draw the shirvala after oh. you reorder your deck so you can for seven mana go order in the court holy wrath and know that you're going to hit your opponent in the face for 25 just to, I, I don't do know that 25 that. is enough in wild at this point but just you know or seven, that's something seven you can mana. do are we ever getting <laughs> <laughs> seven mana is another thing yeah <laughs> I mean, look, you get to banker it as well, right? But yeah, I, that that was a cool deck. I I'm happy for the wild players. I, I, I mean, my, one of my one of my favorite casting moments of all time was when I was casting with Necra, one of Bemi's tournaments, and somebody had like 13 cards in their deck and just slammed Holy Wrath as a hail mary and hit the Shervala for lethal, and we just like lost it for five minutes. We couldn't like like the next game had started, we were still talking about it. I mean, you had to do it sometimes. Yeah. You were like, well, I'm dead on board. Guess we go for it. We dealt five <laughs> damage earlier. Yeah. No, that's what you have to do sometimes. And, you know, I I think with Order in the Court, I was not sorry that it was a card for a while, but I also can see that it's something that people are tired of, that really high consistency in Paladin. And <laughs> now we have to draw our cards, like, if we get to them regularly, like normal people. The old fashioned way, you know, Imagine. running <laughs> Purator or the incredible card that is what Astral Dragon, the four mana three three that draws you two cards. Well, like, the, showdown, like Paladin... the showdown list was already running that, believe it or not. Like, yeah, it's not list like was running Paladin that. doesn't have yeah. good card draw. So I, I, I don't yeah. feel bad. I, like John Bray was saying, I think this kills the deck. And I'm like, I mean, yes, you have to build differently, but but Paladin's going to be fine. I, I don't know. It's... Yeah, that's kind of my opinion on it, too. I haven't seen for the um, the Hunter or the Demon Hunter. For the Demon Hunter, I definitely think I, I, there was a lot of debate about mana versus health. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't seen the Demon Hunter since the uh, nerf <laughs> to it. I definitely know a lot of times playing Naga DH, and also playing against Naga DH, they wouldn't have won or I wouldn't have won. The person playing Naga DH wouldn't have won if they hadn't been able to stick a sharpshooter. Right. And three health. It's not that it takes away the explosiveness of the turn when you play it, but it's very unlikely that it would ever be correct now to just tempo it. Oh, uh, against, no way. Yeah, yeah, like ever correct to just tempo yeah. it. Whereas before that was frequently correct. Four and... health, it would still be living sometimes. Three health is like, this is a glass cannon. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is a one-turn burst. So on the one hand, it does make this deck even more of a one-turn burst, but also it just always felt so bad to have them do the whole thing. You survive, you know if you clear it, they don't have stuff to back it up, but you can't. Mm -hmm. And they just yeah. do the whole thing again. So yeah, it's also it what is... really enabled the like turn four go-offs. Yeah. Right. The deck it was in that that the no hands made where you were an empty hand deck that also sometimes sharpshootered people very frequently it was like even if i cleared they've drawn the second sharpshooter and they pop off again and i still die and so like that's yeah. still an option but it's no longer like i have to bend over backwards to clear the sharpshooter alongside the rest of the board because three damage aoe yeah. is a thing yeah. and right. There were so many times, you know, I think of Golgoneth in particular. I'm like, well, I would love to Golgoneth this board, but I need something else yeah. to finish off the sharpshooter because if I don't, I die. So, yeah, yeah it's like you would have to save like an altered cord or like, uh, um, uh, like Servants of Neptalon or whatever the card is, the five fours. Like, you would need something specific, like you would, and you would need to hold something specific in the mirror. Like, decks were running Trapdoor Spider, right. Like just to get for that card and and like yeah like any legitimate AOE can I mean not just that card but that was a lot of it but that 
you know, any any AOE will deal with it now. So you don't need to spend an extra card on the turn that you're clearing it. Uh, I just went and looked at HS Replay. It's been about, what, two days since the nerf? So I looked at last one day, Legend Top 1000, and what they classify as aggro Demon Hunter is down to 47% win rate. So it's, I mean, it's not, it's not completely dead, but it's, you know, it's around the, the win rate of like Highlander Hunter, right? Like you have to commit to learning to play it really well now. Whereas before you could accidentally win because you tempoed it on three and they didn't have an answer. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we also had in this patch some battlegrounds changes that we're not going to go through if you haven't looked at that already and you play battlegrounds you should look at the patch notes by the way everything we're talking about is linked in the show notes uh there were also some bug fixes too that are of note uh one is the tram cars summoned by trolley problem and tram conductor jerry are no longer mechs they Rip. don't have a cpu <laughs> i'm a little sad about that but sure <laughs> and the fan the hammer now has the fell spell school oh yeah that's nice so that's that's words. yeah it's it's relevant for mage and it's also relevant for that it's something you can discover from the finale get a fell spell card so yep yeah but the really big news <laughs> is that patch 28.2 with Battleground Season 6, Spellslinger Saloon, will be live on Tuesday, December 5th, possibly even by the time that you're listening to this, depending on when you start listening to the show in the week. And the major, so that will start the new season. The major new mechanic is spells. So it's a new type of spell, tavern spells. Unlike blood gems and other existing spells, they are purchased from the tavern. Like minions, they have tavern tiers, but unlike minions, they have variable costs, which are visible on their frame. They have a unique frame. Each tavern refresh will include a spell, a single spell of your tier or lower, in addition to the normal minion offering. So you're not being offered fewer minions. You just also have a spell every refresh. And like existing spells, tavern spells cannot be tripled and are spent once played. So by existing spells, I mean like blood gems, for example. Or like Mukla's bananas. So does that mean there's going to be? Does that mean there's going to be eight options in the sh in the shop when you're at tier six? I believe so. Huh. So yeah, okay. there's there's never fewer minions being offered. Uh, there will be forty two spells uh, released with the patch, and those are being they've already started being revealed. They'll be revealed through uh, Monday. They, some of the spells, I, there was a video from Shady Bunny revealing the tier one and tier two spells. I actually recommend, if you're into Battlegrounds, I recommend watching that. It's like 17 minutes, but he has some really good analysis of the spells. Uh, some of the spells that we've seen, uh, for example, uh, tier three, three gold, Staff of Enrichment, minions in the tavern have plus two, plus two this game. So you're missing out on a minion, but then all of the minions in the tavern have plus two, plus two for the rest of the game. Uh, a tier five spell for four gold, Jaws of Fate, spin the wheel of yogg -Saron. I don't think we know what the wheel of yogg is. Oh, no, no, yet. that that's a that's a known thing. That's been in the game for oh, a while. Oh, that's been in the game for a while. Yeah. See, yeah. I, I look a lot into this, but I know nothing about Battlegrounds on that show. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. I will steal a little bit from Shady Bunny's analysis on some of, so a lot of the tier one, tier two spells, some of them buff minions. So like they have a banana from Mukla that's plus two, plus two, instead of plus one, plus one, but you have to pay a gold for it. There's one where you can give a minion plus three health and taunt, which especially later in the game has some really interesting implications that you can give any minion taunt that you want. There's a lot of gold manipulation that'll make curves a lot more interesting, I think. It's both really cool and intimidating to me as someone who hasn't totally mastered the standard curve. There's so many spells now that mess with that. So for example, the tavern coin costs one gold, and then when you play it, you gain one gold, but that can be on a later turn. So you can basically save a gold from this turn for later. If there's, there's often a gold that's awkward for you to spend, and so then you can 
you know, maybe level a turn earlier or be able to buy more minions than normal. There's also one, there's a tier two one that gains you two gold next turn if you pay one now. There's one that gains you a gold at the cost of three health. And there's one overconfidence tier two, one gold. If you win your next combat, you gain three gold next turn. Otherwise you gain one gold. The art on that is I, amazing, by the way. It's the just Sylvanas, is like, cool. it's like Sylvanas throwing a dart behind her back and hitting the bullseye. <laughs> and one that I thought was interesting, Strike Oil is a tier two spell for three gold. You increased your max gold by one, which from the video, it sounded like that's also your current gold. Yeah, so, I, I forget who so I saw someone on Twitter saying you could have just called this wild growth, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it is it is wild growth. So you have a tempo loss and that you missed out on a whole minion, basically, but your whole curve is accelerated by a turn for the rest of the game. So uh, that enables some really interesting ways to change your curve overall. And, in, you, you know, when you see it, you can you'll have to adjust kind of your whole strategy uh, to how you're going to plan out your turns ahead of time. I can see, especially for people who are really knowledgeable in Battlegrounds, how this will really reward that skill, these spells, uh, for being able to, and the, of course the skill that's always been there in Battlegrounds, which is being able to adapt your game plan really uh, dynamically uh, based on what you're offered. But. Uh, there will also be three new heroes and 32 new minions. A lot of them have to do with spells. Uh, the three new heroes are Dr. Holiday, whose hero power costs one gold to get a random tavern spell that you don't, you don't have to pay for the tavern spell. So that could be, depending on what you get, could be very good. Uh, Snake Eyes, the hero power costs one gold. Roll a six-sided die to gain that much gold. Can't be used again for that many turns. So if you roll a one, basically nothing happened. You just got your gold back. If you roll a six, you get six gold now, but you can't use it for six turns. So you're probably not really using it again, <laughs> unless it was really <laughs> early that you got that. And lastly, there's Tathalon Bloodwatcher, whose hero power is passive. Every third tavern spell you buy costs zero, which okay. seems like it could be powerful. Uh, there's a lot of minions that get buffs based on spells or otherwise reward you for buying spells. Uh, there was a tier six minion, uh, Worgen Vigilante. It's a 1020 Wind Fury. This minion always attacks an enemy minion that it can kill if possible. Hmm. Seems so good. Seems, yeah. seems good. I mean, it's tier six. Ugh, should be good, but. <laughs> That seems like it has some, depending on, you know, by the time you're at tier six, you're often targeting a particular person. So depending on what their, what their build is, that could be good. There's also a new theme for undead minions where some of them are able to destroy minions during the recruit phase to, for example, the one they revealed so far uh, gives you three gold or six gold uh, in exchange for destroying a minion. And there is there was a clarification on Twitter from Mitchell Lowen. Uh, if you destroy a minion during the recruit phase, it will trigger that minion's reborn and or death rattles. So oh. <laughs> that is interesting though. Yeah. So that it makes sense to have that in the undead tribe for that reason. Yeah. Uh, the reveals of the new spells and minions have begun. They will continue through Monday. Uh, you can keep track of that on the announcement blog or at Play Hearthstone on Twitter or anywhere else you get your Battlegrounds cards. There will also be a streamer preview event on Monday the 4th, the day before the season goes live. Uh, the North American, European, and Latin American lobbies are from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Pacific, and the Korean and Japanese lobbies are 1 a.m. to 7 a.m. Pacific. Uh, you watch on the participating streamers' channels, and they have season pass giveaways for viewers so that's you can see the announcement blog for details on who the creators are and links to their channels if you are interested in terms of standard this patch does not have standard balance changes in it that is a separate patch which should be later next week so probably thursday the 7th maybe friday the 8th i don't actually know exactly what day but it said in the uh, previous patch that we got 
that there would be another balance patch setting up for the world championships late next week. Really? I'm well, the, ch the championships actually... are the following week. The world championships are the 16th and 17th. Right. The, the patch is yeah. late next week. The championship is the 16th and 17th the following week. I am surprised to hear that there will be another patch before Worlds. Yeah, I, I, I get the sense that they are not, we're not 100% confident that the change to Sharpshooter in particular was going to be enough. Mm -hmm. But they also didn't want to nerf the card into the ground unnecessarily. And right. like normally, we would have these two windows, right? I think that normally we would have a window after the like a week and a half after the next content patch but then that would be like a day or two before worlds and like not that they've shied away from doing balance patches close to a, a master's tour but worlds is a little worlds. bit different so <laughs> you know I, I think that that's good that they're considering that and um you know it's a, adjusting the patch schedule because they can't adjust it later right because then you're getting into christmas right. so you, you don't really have the following week to do it. So that's really the only time that they can do a balance patch following the content patch. So, you know, it, it, it is a little bit close and I would imagine that any changes that they're going to make are going to be extremely high confidence changes given that worlds is the following week and that's the world's patch. But I'm glad that they do have another opportunity in case they, in case they do need to. And maybe that's when we get some buffs, right? Like we only got, one buff here I, I maybe actually I, I don't think they're gonna buff a bunch of stuff right before worlds but that would probably be a post worlds patch i guess but we'll it's see. possible they won't feel like they need to do a lot of changes but i think yeah they, right. they wanted to leave themselves that opportunity yeah i guess it's it's just unusual right because we got this balance patch two days ago right? yeah or, and... definitely uh, to have another one the following week is just not something we've been used to. I, I know part yeah. of it's because of the the holiday, but and and wanting to squeeze it in a week before Worlds. But it it's just I don't remember another time apart from emergency patches, right, where we've had a balance patch a week apart. Yeah. I wonder if they really wanted to get, they were thinking, like they could have just waited until next week if they wanted to have more time to have more data for higher confidence changes. But then they did run a small risk of, if they got it wrong this patch, and then they mm -hmm. also have a patch next week, they have a chance to correct it before Worlds. Right. If they only have a patch next week yeah. and they mess it up, then too bad for Worlds. So I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if we actually, because at least so far, you know, it was just patched here it doesn't seem like there's any major problems mm -hmm. they might not do that much but we'll have to see what they do yeah in particular i guess maybe we could see something happen to mage next week right whether it's to uh inquisitive creation or sif or, or you know something like that just because mm -hmm. that deck has been around the block now <laughs> uh and you know, if it's still in a pretty dominant position and they would rather something different be at Worlds. I mean, who, I mean, that's not exactly... Yeah. I know that's not entirely how they make decisions, but... And then similarly, if, like, this had not been enough to impact Paladin, you know, maybe they would revisit that. Yeah. I'm looking, I'm looking at popularity for the last day at Legend and... Rainbow Mage is the is the top deck, but it's only it's like eleven percent of the legend meta, which mm -hmm. is high, but it's not it's not like raise the alarms high. Like usually we don't get super concerned until it's like, you know, fifteen to twenty percent. But I mean then you have like Plague Death Knight at eight and a half percent, because of course. Uh Highlander Shaman at eight percent, and then Dragon Druid at six and a half percent, everything's below that. So like that doesn't seem and oppressive. At not high play, right? But very high win rate is in Rage Warrior. Right? I mean, and what else usual. is new? <laughs> and, and, what else is new? Yeah. Uh, Trial by Fire is still perhaps yeah. get reverted. <laughs> that that's that's the card I would still be looking at, right? Like if that yeah. deck gets, because like I, I would think that Warrior, like Warrior, was in every every lineup at the Masters Tour. It might be the case that that's the case again, 
just because Enraged Warrior is so good against a lot of stuff. And, yeah, that, that wouldn't necessarily surprise me. I'm just looking. Yeah, there's not even enough. No, there is enough. I mean, it's got... It's got some bad ma it's it's got some fairly polarized matchups but yeah it's at a 56% win rate um which is at top 1000 which is high That's pretty good. I mean I could also see there's plenty of things that I would be interested in seeing buffs for. I just don't know whether they want to shake it up that much before worlds. <laughs> but I think at some point we'll probably see some buffs to archetypes that aren't performing as much. So, and I think we may see a, a nerf to Reno eventually, but I doubt it will be now. <laughs> because one, Reno one, is yeah. something they want to be powerful, I think. Yeah. One one other thing that's interesting, just looking at the top 1,000 matchups, is that at top 1,000 legend last one day, aggro demon hunter is like 11% of the top 1,000. I mean, again, we're talking very small sample sizes, like 7,400 games total. But Aggro Demon Hunter is like 11% of the meta, but it's got a 46.5% win rate. So people, I guess, are trying it and not apparently having too much success. But at top 1,000, it's Rainbow Mage at 14%, Highlander Shaman 11%, Aggro Demon Hunter 11%, and Rage Warrior 8%, Dragon Druid 7%, and then it goes down from there. So take from that what you will. Yeah. We so, may have to cover Dragon Druid some other time. That deck is pretty sweet. Yeah, if I ever learn how to play it, maybe. But <laughs> <laughs> We will probably have to. I haven't played it much yet, but I definitely will. I've certainly faced it. I can <laughs> yeah. report on the facing and experience. But yes, so unless I guess they decide they really don't want to change anything. Um, although I'm sure there's bug fixes slated for then as well. So there's actually two patches slated for next week. The Battlegrounds patch on Tuesday and standard patch probably Thursday or Friday. Uh, there will probably, however, be, or there, there will be some bug fixes on the Tuesday patch for standard, uh, including fixing Zymox, which you probably haven't seen a Relic DH, but if you have and they played Zymox, you need to restart the client right away because it will suspend things. So uh, that, but that'll be fixed on Tuesday and along with other known issues. So uh, we also heard uh, there will be the Winter Vale holiday event will be from December 12th to January 2nd. So that's three weeks. So a little bit more time to get that done over the holidays if you have less time to play. Yeah. And, and plan for the Happy Feast of Winter Vale BM meta accordingly. <laughs> <laughs> that is even equally important. And definitely yes. the events now... They have, you know, as I'm sure you've noticed, they've changed it. So you really do probably want to um, try to get, I, I find I, I no longer can get it just by playing. I do need to do the major event quest. The dailies don't really matter that much. And they do really ramp up. So uh, where the later ones have the big rewards you need to really get to the end. But I do like that they, you know, they say like, play this one card or like, player defeat 12 battle cry minions yeah. I, I appreciate that because it, it means you don't really have to go out of your way yeah and play or play. encounter in some cases too like yeah. play or encounter reno lone, lone ranger was one that i had today which is especially if you didn't happen to pull one right then that's that's a pretty that's a pretty good way to handle it because somebody else is going to have a reno eventually like that's a pretty good one way to do <laughs> that it that probably too. won't take too long but yeah like, I, I didn't have, like, what is it, Flint Fire Hook or whatever the hell his name is. Like, I didn't even have that card. And I was, like, trying. I, I, I was glad that I didn't have to have it to clear the quest because I did not really want to craft it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we also had a update on the Twist Winter Break. So they had announced that Twist would be going on hiatus for December and January to return for February, but there was a lot of people really disappointed about that. And even though there are not maybe that many people playing Twist right now, the people who are are very passionate about it and really enjoying Hi. the Wonders plus Ungoro <laughs> season. Um, so instead of disabling Twist for December, they will keep the current format Wonders plus Ungoro uh, 
going through December. There will still be a break in January, and then it will come back with a new format in February. They do say that they they didn't communicate this well enough, but they did always intend for there to be breaks. Um, so it would be a seasonal mode that would deactivate from time to time, kind of like a giant tavern brawl. That break gives us time to learn from prior twist seasons and prepare for upcoming ones. And we hope it will make twist more exciting when it returns, is what they say. Although they do say that we understand now that the announced language was not clear enough in conveying how long those breaks could be. <laughs> Going yeah. forward, we'll do a better job of sharing our plans for upcoming breaks. For now, we hope yeah. that you continue to enjoy the Return to Angoro format, and we look forward to sharing the February season with you. And, and I think it's fine if you're going to have breaks. I think the timing of the breaks is a little weird. Like, I would think if you're going to have a break from Twist, you're going to do it in the month when an expansion launches. Because, like, that's the that's the month when people are spending a lot of time experimenting with the other formats. They're not necessarily going to have... Like, Twist is very much a secondary format for a lot of people. And having it in the month when an expansion launches, when people are either all in on Standard or all in on Wild, because they just got a whole bunch of new of new toys to play with, makes a lot more sense than, like, oh, yeah, you can have it in in November when we release the, the set, but then... In December and January, when you're looking for something different to do, it's not going to be there. Like, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So I'm hoping that, you know, when they come back, if they're going to do that, and if they're doing it in February, right, and they have three months, then maybe they have a one-month break in, like, March, April, May, in, like, June. I guess June wouldn't necessarily line up with the new expansion because it's going to be March. It's going to be the new expansion release, so... I guess that doesn't really work, but hopefully they'll figure out a way to get it to line up with the expansion releases because that makes the most sense if you're going to take it away. Like when people are looking for an alternate format is when they're tired of the meta and that's not often in the first month of a, of a set. I do think at least it is good that they're starting this new format in February since yeah. that will now be the month for... And that's usually the time when people, even though often it's when they have the format the most balanced, people are the most tired of it. So, <laughs> but it, I, I agree that it is odd timing and hopefully they'll consider that as they're planning their breaks going forward. Because it does seem like the best time for a break would be an expansion launch. And that's probably yeah. not going to happen this time because it would be weird for them to have February and then have a break right away in March. We'll see. Hopefully, if they do, they communicate it. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> like in relationships, communication is key. <laughs> yes. So, also, we just have... <laughs> we're almost done with the news, I promise. Uh, there was some data mining in World of Warcraft. It looks like there may be a Hearthstone 10th anniversary crossover in World of Warcraft uh, with a fiery hearth steed mount uh, a compass rose that looks like the hearthstone box and a pet sarge which is adorable we have a link to this in the show notes if you haven't seen this and some like hearthstone themed outfits so uh, it, it looks pretty cute i don't really play world of warcraft anymore but if i did i would definitely get these links <laughs> yeah uh, also just in general why don't we have more sarge yeah. Like Sarge is Absolutely. Sarge is amazing. We need more Sarge. Like Sarge needs better representation in the game. I don't know how you do it, but like where what why do the Warcraft players get Sarge and we don't? Yeah. This is we, true. We need a, a Sarge era skin, right? That's like Sarge yes, and Sarge. That's exactly cosplay. what we need. <laughs> and yes. it's a warlock skin. That's or or that. alternatively, Sarge and Sally. Mm hmm Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if there will be like anything going into Hearthstone because like this is all Hearthstone stuff. I would right? imagine, so, yeah. Wow, uh, you know. When, I would imagine they... there's gonna like if there's gonna be like this much going into WoW, there's got to be a lot of stuff going into the actual game. I mean, maybe, uh, maybe it'll just be hey, here's here's Hearthstone two client. Uh, you know, that's. <laughs> I mean, wasn't I it? Wasn't yeah. With that, I don't know how yeah. many other people would be. <laughs> i would just be happy for the developers yeah i mean i'm I'm thinking back to like the 
Oh, the darkening of Tristram, which yeah. was the Are that they... was the yeah the an Did that was the anniversary that dungeon. Yeah. They bring it back every year, but it started in 2017 so cool. for like the anniversary of the. So if you don't know, so Diablo three had an annual event in January called the darkening of Tristram, where which was it was basically a bonus for. The, the I think it was like the 15th anniversary of Diablo, something like that, or maybe 20th. No, it would have been 20th, I think, because it was it was 2017 that they started it, and it was 1997 that Diablo 1 came out, because I remember it was my senior year of college. Senior year of high school, rather. Um, yeah, I know, I'm old. So, uh, and it, it was like this really cool mode where it basically recreated like the whole world of Diablo 1, including with like a pixelated effect within Diablo 3. So, like, I that's my that's my like my litmus test right it's if that's what they're going to do for for diablo i mean i know it's the 20th anniversary but not not the 10th anniversary but like we ought to be getting something cool for something like this i would expect yeah if ever there was a a thing to show the change in size of games between 1997 <laughs> and today it is that yeah. The entirety of Diablo 1 just would get patched into Diablo 3 for this event. Yeah. yeah. And and uh, like you could only you could only walk in four directions, even though like in Diablo 3 you could walk wherever you wanted. Like you could only walk in like like four car or maybe it was eight cardinal directions. It was yeah. it was very cool. It, it happens every year. I don't know if they're gonna keep doing it now that you know Diablo 4 is a thing, but maybe they'll do um, it in four, who knows? Maybe they'll do it in four, who knows? But anyway. Not to not to make this a Diablo podcast again, but <laughs> All right, I'm here to keep us on track. The last thing that we have here, uh, Stinzy has a poll on Twitter, or I have a link directly to it if you uh, do not go on Twitter. And it is the worst card of all time. Uh, Wicked, I am I'm sorry to inform you that Lakari sacrifice is already out of the running. No, it's the children who are wrong. <laughs> like. <laughs> I, I I I did a little bit of a campaigning. I was expecting to be doing more of a campaigning because I figured it would at least clear the first round. But, I'm surprised. Um, what was it up against? Oh, I, I forget. I'd have to go take a look at it. But like I and and Lakari and I was I had COVID when we started talking about when when Angoro stuff got buffed. But like I like Blubber La Baron. Oh, oh no. what even is? Blubber? Yeah, that's not that's that They're is that wrong. is inju that is injustice. Is what Blubber that Baron is. was at least a real card in arena like i i am disappointed in, li in literally <laughs> oh, everybody it, it should have beat but... the the next opponent it would have faced too which is sea reaver yeah people the, the children like, are wrong they they're too young like, to remember the Christ so sacrificed. so like on goro was the very like when i started before i even had off curve i did uh card reviews with andrew brown from on the happy Hearthstone, and that was the first one that we did together and I remember going out on a limb and like slamming that card because I thought it was trash. And then watching like Trump SC's video where he rated it five out of five and thinking, oh no, I've ruined all of my credibility. And then the card came out and I was justified. But the 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 price that I paid for that is that we did not yet have duplicate protection when Angoro was a thing. I think it was after Angoro that they implemented duplicate protection just for legendaries. And I only opened like three legendaries and two of them were Lakari Sacrifice. Oh no. <laughs> and I was I I then had to try to make it work because that was what I had to work with. Thankfully I opened up Yogg a couple packs later after my initial packs, but so that that helped a little bit, but but it was it was just like it was so it was original quest from Mongoro where you had to discard i think six cards and then you got a portal that would give you three two imps every turn like like sargaris does now except you can't do anything to the imps and the problem was that you would end up discarding the other cards that would need to discard so that you would never actually be able to discard enough cards to be able to get the thing and then when you <laughs> did it you just had two three twos and your opponent just killed you anyway so yeah, it was actually terrible. And I tried a bunch of times, even after they printed things like Cataclysm, which destroyed all, all minions on board and discarded your hand. So you could do it all at once and, and other discard things and it never, it never worked. And I was always sad that I had those sitting in my collection. Honestly, some of these pairings, I'm like offended. <laughs> How on earth 
to people, but like, do they know which way they're voting here? The jailer beat out Rin Orchestrator of Doom, right. 78 to 22. I think that's because people hated jailer decks, not because yeah. the jailer is a worse card than Rin. Well, like, even now, now. well the current incarnation, it kind of is, but it's... But I, I mean, I would assume these are going off past stuff because Astrid no, Ball, no, no. It's 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 whatever like the main like it was at the time, but the jailer is now as it is, right? So I think they're voting I, in that case. I think they're Rindo, voting for the jailer as it is. Rin, come on. <laughs> like yeah, I I think it's highly arguable at best that even current jailer is worse than Rin. Yeah, I mean, there and and ridiculous had helped with this determining these cards by the way like the the initial bracket and and like there's a very big difference in like there it's kind of like how there's a difference between like top 200 legend players and everybody else even like uh -huh. top 1000 legend players there is a difference between a bad card and a card that you play it and it l immediately loses you the game like <laughs> there, yeah. like dusk fall and aviata is not no. on the same level as a lot of the cards on that list it, for example it, it... If it's not Temporis versus Dusk Falling Naviana in the finals, I'm like I'm gonna flip a table. Like that's Yeah. <laughs> those are the two Are they most... on different are they on different sides of the bracket? They are. Okay. And like, All right. if it is yeah. not Temporis and Dusk Falling Naviana in the finals, like they're just wrong. Because those are the two most you play it and die cards, like ever printed. So go vote <laughs> to make sure. <laughs> That we still have Eloise alive <laughs> for podcasts going forward. And her table. For, it's fine. Virtually, and that her table is still alive. Actually, <laughs> the table would win. I cannot flip my, my dining table. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, also, I will I will accept as a consolation if Major Domo Executus is one of those. <laughs> so major domo executus was a nine mana nine seven in black rock sure. mountain with death rattle replaced your hero with fragnos the fire lord which gave you a hero power that did eight damage to a random enemy but also set your your life to eight mm -hmm. so you <laughs> you were very likely just play it and then immediately die you yeah. could survive one snake I if think you took no other now, damage i think <laughs> there was actually a deck that you won by forcing that death rattle to trigger on the opponent's side of the board. <laughs> and then killing them. I think you're I think I remember that. I can't remember how this but that sounds right. All right. I think that is it for the news. Definitely a heavy news day. All right. So why don't we do some quick talks about tournaments and then let's talk about frogs. It's the grand This is your friendly reminder that the World Championships are December 16th and 17th. That should be a Saturday and a Sunday. Please watch, if you can, on Twitch. I would like to still have a job next year. <laughs> we can get those viewership numbers up. I would appreciate it. If we can break over 20K, that'd be fantastic. But yeah, it's, it's going to be fantastic because... Pocket's going to be there. Mostly that's that's why. I forget who else is going to be there. But it's... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lot of the same people we've, we've been seeing all year. I think when it, when it comes down to points stuff, there have been some close races. One of the reasons that Pocket was so emotional at the end of the last event was because he knew that he had, you know, ruined any shot of Banterface uh, making it to Worlds. And I think they had the same lineup. Um and uh, Casey was facing off in terms of points versus someone else. And I believe Casey is is at this point pretty much on top. I could be wrong on that. but so I'm, I'm looking at the pocket train posted two hours ago, unofficial list of player uh -huh. of qualified players to the world championship. Uh, Pocket Train, Gyu and Levick, obviously they ran, they won all, they won the uh, Masters Tours. Uh, Weak Yu, Meaty, Hemlock, Rekvam, and CJ Kaka. Right, I got it reversed. So it's it was yeah. one yeah. of either CJ Kaka, CJ Kaka or Casey was going to make it, and 
CJ Kaka won out. CJ Kaka, of course, being the Naga Mage enjoyer, although I would be... I suppose I wouldn't be too surprised, but I would be a little surprised if he still brought Naga Mage to the World Championships. We shall see. I mean, at that point, Maybe he can have an all Naga lineup. You do Naga Mage, Naga DH, Naga Priest. I mean, <laughs> it, even if you bring the Priest, there isn't a fourth one. <laughs> Just put Naga in something and call it a, a Naga. Yeah. Naga, yeah. Naga Hunter. They they have that like two three that does damage based. Yeah, see stuff. there you go. Yeah, Miracle and Rogue you play the the card Naga. that makes the three threes. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it should be an event to remember, and uh, the the grind has been so real this year. These players have put in so much time. I feel like you know the least we can do is is honor that by. Uh, you know, taking the weekend to, to watch. So, uh, in other tournament news, there is the Battle of the Discords on December 2nd and 3rd, and players will be competing individually, but can choose to represent either Coin Concede, Vicious Syndicate, THL, or Tierras de Fuego. Uh, format is going to be standard Conquest open deck list, Swiss day one, and then top 16 single elim day two. There are prizes of a uh, pre-order or, you know, just generally packs for the top four. And then players of all levels are encouraged to participate. And there's a server reward for the winning server as well, which I believe is something to do with HS Replay. So if you want to represent Coin Concede, you can register up until December 2nd. So... Maybe it'll be too late, and we should blast this on other platforms by the time you're here. Yeah. <laughs> well, yes, if you're listening to the if you're it. listening to the raw the raw patron feed, then or you know you're watching us live, yeah. then you will have heard that. And if not, hopefully we'll get the episode out on Saturday. But you know, I'll do my best to edit tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, so, yeah, and even if not, I'm sure you know it'll be streaming. You can check that. We out. we definitely have at, le at least a couple of representatives, so we're not gonna. Mm -hmm. It's not you know. We, we'll we'll be okay but you know always having more people representing us is always good and this actually did remind me that there was a a minor bit of uh, podcast hearthstone news which is that if you've been wondering what happened to vicious syndicate corb had to uh take a break well uh, he's he's left the show due to uh burnout just trying to keep up with his own content and vicious syndicate proved to be a little too much, which I totally get as since he was doing the editing there and I can very much sympathize with doing <laughs> the editing. It's, it's tough Oof, work. Yeah. Um, so uh, Zacho is going to take you know, whatever time he needs to find uh, another host to work with and we wish him luck in that endeavor. But we have a very fun deck list cover that I'm pretty sure, Wicked, you've been playing the most of. So... So let's talk about frogs, which is, or and more specifically, Reno Shaman. But I've, I've named it Frog Squad in my in my deck list because there are multiple frogs, and they are uh, varying degrees of adorable. And uh, my my daughters are obsessed with Froggy Chair from Animal Crossing, so you know there's a lot of frog <laughs> stuff in that. So why Reno Shaman? Why would you want to play this list? And the the it's because you look at the list, we have it up on the screen, and it looks like a pile. Which, I mean, most Highlander decks kind of do. <laughs> but it's there's not really a clear, like... Like, when you had Highlander Hunter in the in the old Doom days, like, okay, well, I'm trying to slam Diner Tamer Brand, and then maybe a crush, a, a natural crush after that, and, and use that to get there. And you had, you know, Zephyrus and whatever. Um, there's not as much of a clear win con for the deck uh but it turns out that this is just the return of moist shaman with less murlocs and more frogs mm -hmm. that's basically what this is it's it's a tempo deck that can go long it is probably the mid-rangiest mid-range deck we have had in quite a while <laughs> is that uh, thing? i said is the that word 
I said the word. And, uh, and I mean it. It is a mid-range deck. It, it, I have won games with this deck on turn seven just by playing cards on curve and hitting my opponent in the face. Yes, I'm, a, I'm able to do that. I, I, am, I am physically capable. It does happen occasionally. I saw that. Um, yes. So you can also go incredibly long. You can, you can have enough removal to outlast more aggressive decks. I have just card advantage paladins out of the game i've on occasion i didn't have much luck with that on monday but i have on occasion been able to outlast a demon hunter you have a lot of healing access to healing and you just have a very flexible game plan because the cards that you have access to are very flexible and often have a lot of discovers and the discover pools that you have are generally very good for shaman Shaman has access to some of the best removal in the game. It's got a lot of healing and it can discover burn for lethal. So mm -hmm. it you you kind of have to be very open about how you're going to play the game and plan accordingly like you but this can be and often should be played as a tempo deck when you can. Um Doc Holiday is some of the best tempo in the game. I I vastly underestimated that card when mm -hmm. it was revealed and and i think part of it was having to see reno right like we needed to see reno to know what the other payoff was going to be because by itself it didn't seem good enough but it kind of is i did actually get the achievement for summoning the nine nine frog like the first day <laughs> that i was playing that i was playing the deck yeah. uh, that was against a control priest that game took forever but but i did get to swing nine times and get a nine nine but being able to i mean First of all, just having a two attack weapon that you get to swing with nine times is just that's 18 damage, right? Yeah. Like right there eventually. I mean, it's it's you would rather the game not take you that long, but you can. Right. And then you still get a taunt minion on the board, which becomes more and more of an issue. So Doc, Doc Holiday is actually one of the best cards in the deck. And you very often keep it in the mulligan unless you know you're at, you're against like a hyper aggro type of deck. The, the um. mulligan statistics on Doc Holiday are <laughs> insane. Both both the mulligan and played statistics yeah. on this deck. Are... Yeah, I think I think Hat posted in the Discord yesterday that it's got like the highest played win rate of any card in standard, something like that. Um, it is it, it the game you and you notice it, you feel it. Like the games where where Doc Holiday is at the bottom of your deck, you feel it that the, the deck is just not doing as much because just having the pressure of an increasingly large frog every turn on top of whatever else you're doing, as long as you don't have to swing into like a, a seven, seven taunt to get there. Um, it's, it does add up and it's just, it's more resources that your opponent needs to commit to clearing things instead of hitting you in the face. It makes a, a huge difference. Mulligan win rate. Uh, it is the top mulligan win rate in the deck. 64.4 percent at least for Ooh. what i'm looking at uh <laughs> legend top 1k and then played win rate 65.7 percent and played win rate we we usually consider a garbage stat because there are certain cards where it's like yeah it's 90 percent played win rate because you literally only play it if you win the game doc yeah. holiday is not one of those cards like it's a card that you just run out as soon as you can and uh, it gives you value over time so it's a, a little more impressive to see a played win rate like that on this type of card because uh because it's not just winning the game on the spot yeah yeah it, it it's very good and so like you're basically playing around like reno and dr holiday and then putting in just like the good cards in it you get to run giant tumbleweed which is a very very good card you still get to run uh both prince of yoxeron and yoxeron unleashed which it's turns true. out totally fine. Yeah, totally it's fine cool. in this deck. Fine card. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, you can go Reno into Yogg, which is, you know, we know that that works out pretty well. Um, you can get some lethals with, like, Horn of the Wind Lord turn, uh, turn the Tides. That mm -hmm. turns out to be 12 damage. You don't really have, like, the original versions that Wire were built had, like, extra, another copy. I think it had another copy of Turn the Tides in, in ETC, and he had, like, a Doom Hammer also to make yeah, sure that you had it. it it turns out you don't really need it. Like you just kind of find the damage, but it's you're 
you really need to be planning towards what your win con is and your win con changes based on your matchup and based on the cards that you draw because it's a Highlander deck. So it's not necessarily, you have to be flexible in your game plan and, and really be good at recognizing what your win condition is and playing towards that. Um, but in when you're in doubt, play your cards. I know we say that every time that we do a, a deck, you know, a deck guide. It's still true. <laughs> we say it because it's true a lot. But, you know, like you, it, there's a temptation to hold stuff back in this deck because you're looking for value. You're looking for combos. You're looking for um, you're, you're just trying to, to overwhelm with value. The value you're going to get is just by playing your cards and overwhelming your opponent with tempo. There are very few cards, and I think Flowrider might be the only one that you wouldn't tempo if you're not going to be, if, if it's got any sort of a conditional uh, like effect that you're not going to trigger. Like I, It's got Greedy Partner. There are like five other two-cost cards. I just play Greedy Partner on two. I don't care if I get the coin. If I get the coin, it's great. If not, I don't care. Like. Yeah. It's still a two three it's fine like uh, you know is there something better there that you could run there maybe it doesn't matter though it's like just play it for the two three if you happen to get a coin out of it great but you it's not worth holding it like a lot of uh, you know again if you're if you're in a control role and you know that there are certain threats that you need to hold cards for then hold them right like if you if you know that your opponent's playing naga dh and you're, or or they're playing a bunch of stuff out of like there's going to have a wide board of like low health minions out of like a rainbow mage and you're going to need to hold the lightning storm don't just slam the lightning storm it's fine but if you uh, if you know yeah. you need to poof a portal yeah. of some kind then yeah, you hold can hold yeah. reno but i would say the only time that i was playing this that I, I really regretted playing something too early mostly i was regretting playing things too late was i i ran into an actual mech rogue and didn't hold my uh -huh. primordial wave nearly long yeah. enough i did discover Ooh. another one but I also like I if I had held the first one just a little bit longer and used my health as more of a resource, I think I would have won that game. Yeah. And that kind of brings me to the fact that there are certain cards with like low keep rates but higher win rates because they're very good in specific matchups. For example, Wave you want to keep against Enrage Warrior because that's actually kind of tough matchup, but Wave can like give you a good shot because they just run out the stuff and Animo Extractor, and you're like, cool, let's get rid of that. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, it can give you an edge that you wouldn't have. Just having access to transform in the class is pretty crazy. And like you were saying about the discovers, the cycle of discovers that you can get is pretty hilarious. Like, you can lightning reflexes and go, well, that's a miss, but I found an amphibious elixir. And you yep. play amphibious yep. elixir, you get to discover off that and the second thing in the reflexes. So there's a lot of ways of finding cards. You can scroll and the nature spell you hit is reflexes or amphibious elixir. Um, also of note in scroll, the pool of frost and fire spells is very limited. So uh, it's pretty good odds like if you're like, I have to scroll for healing or I have to do something for healing, like you might hit the uh, restore eight frost spell. I think it's just chill, chill vibes. Yeah. Yeah. It's just yeah. chill vibes. And oh, no. And cold storage. And cold storage. Yeah. Cold yeah, yeah. storage. Yeah. yeah. Cold storage often, you know, you you know, maybe this is a slower matchup. You're going to need another Astolor. You're right. going to want to take their Amon Thul. Uh, do you remember yeah. Frozen <laughs> prevents the Titan from mm -hmm. using an ability? Almond right. is yes. a bad example because they can just like synchronize it or something. But <laughs> <laughs> if there's another Titan, you freeze it, they cannot use the Yogg ability. is the other That's... one that, that happens a fair yeah. amount. Like Yog Yogg or Gol or opposing Golgoneths are are pretty common to do that. I've I've cold storaged a Golgoneth and then just either cleared the board or used the deal twenty on it to get rid of it. Like I've I've often frozen a Yogg to take their Yogg. That's always fun. Uh, but I mean, cold storage again, you don't need to be fancy with it. Just like there's a good minion. I want another one, freeze it, get a copy of it. It's like, don't, don't hoard it. Right. Like just use it for tempo very often. Uh, it, like you can get into like Baron's pre scenarios with some of the generation for sure. And, uh -huh. and that's, you know, that's one way you can go, but also just like, there's a lot of times where I'll just start discovering just cause I'm close and I need to find burn. Right. And like, 
the the burn i mean there's a fair amount of burn you can find like lightning bolt crash of thunder turn the tides is effectively burn as long as they don't have a taunt um scalding geyser overdraft and if you really want to be flashy there's jive insect yep there there <laughs> have been oh there have been a lot of times that i've looked at a, at at a piranha and a jive insect in my hand and wanted to make it happen and just never was able to but it's always like Oh, I could piranha jive insect. I know I can do it. I really want to do it. It never works out, but I, I, I always want to. I think there's three <laughs> fire spells, and that is scalding geyser, jive insect, and the burning transmutation, which is the blazing transmutation. Yeah, like blazing transmutation. Yeah, which is the, uh, which don't be afraid of taking that if you know you need to transform an enemy minion, because even though you are, uh, transforming it up a mana cost. You get to discover, so you can you know try and pick the worst thing if you just know, hey, I need to to be able to silence a thing this game, uh, yeah. or or if it's just a taunt that you need to get out of the way, right? Mm -hmm. I ran into yeah. an actual Chad Warlock, and turns out that's oh. really useful when they play their slime. <laughs> yep. <laughs> They were brave to do that in a meta with lots of Reno. I, I think they're they're hopeless to get it down before the Reno, but they they were thwarted. Ah, uh, there is a fourth fire, I'm told, which is uh, Jam Session. The oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And Jam, jam Session jam, is quite yeah. useful. Jam yeah, Session's great. Fun. Like like you can go sometimes just like Shock Hopper, which is the one two frog that gives you a random overload card into Jam Session, and that's fine. And Jam mm -hmm. Session against Paladin in particular is amazing. <sighs> Yeah. Because all their stuff is one is one health. There was I was in Pocket Train's stream the other day, um, and Wirer was actually in his chat. And there was a very confusing sequence of events because Pocket had run into a player who was playing Paladin who he played against before, and he said to to Wirer like, "Hey, Wirer, is this is Jam Session always a keep against Paladin?" And he said no. And then come to find out, no. Well, because that you've played against that person already, and they're playing Reno Paladin. So, so don't keep it against them. But normally, yes, you keep Jam Session against Paladin when you don't know that they're actually Reno Paladin. Mm -hmm. But so Jam Session, in either to, to deal with a Paladin board or just like you've got a totem and you can turn it into damage, or they leave one one minion behind and you can just slam it on the on the minion and just start pushing face. Like it's fine. Just do it. Like it's a lot of it is just kind of figure getting in the chip damage while you can and then you know figuring out like hoarding burn or having a weapon and turn the tides or whatever to to kind of get over the line and sometimes you just like make a bunch of big stuff and you can't deal with it and then you win like that's also yeah. a thing that that just kind of happens sometimes like the like sometimes the six six from tumbleweed is enough like they can't clear that they've cleared everything else you just wipe their board and left a six six ball on the board and they can't deal with it and then you just like jam session or whatever or that's or that's enough to get you over the line um what? and uh, along that vein there are times where you're like well my board's like okay i don't really want to lose it but i've got this giant tumbleweed and i could just hit face with everything and then tumbleweed yeah. kill their stuff and have a six six right like yeah the the deck is that kind of aggressive where you're like i'm willing to get rid of both our boards because i get to hit you in the face with all my minions and have a six six afterwards uh, reno lone ranger is a very aggressive card like yes it's a it's a board clear that is incredible because it poofs but the fact that it is a uh, plague wind right only the opponent's side rather than a twisting nether sorry i put in a magic card reference because i <laughs> uh, it, like that is a big deal and and just the they can only play one minion is is just so nuts uh, the fact that you curve it into yog right there's been so many times where i'm like i will reno get to hit face with all my minions they have to do stuff about my board and even if i don't have an impressive board they will play their Astalor 8 or, you know, some other big minion, and I follow up with Yogg-Saraw and Mind Control, that, that you know, single yep. strong minion that they played. And yeah. uh, damage... And you have the hero power. Yeah, Two damage well, right. Every turn from yeah. now on. Damage count. If you play Holiday on five, you get four swings. That's eight damage. And uh, the fourth swing being on turn eight when you play Reno Lone Ranger. And now you have five more swings, which is ten damage. On those turns, you will also have a deal two damage hero power. 
Uh, so that's 28 altogether yeah. from from those turns. Now, of course, you're probably going to be hitting some of that into minions and stuff, but you will usually be doing that for the point of getting your frogs to hit face or whatever. So the the damage really, really adds up. Yeah. And, and the other thing that's important with this deck to being successful with it is that you need to be paying attention to overload because mm -hmm. yes. certain some cards have overload on them and you really need to like that doesn't mean you should be afraid of playing overload but you don't generally unless you discover it you don't have an overdraft to bail you out if you mess up mm -hmm. and you generally want to make sure that you're not locking yourself out of a key turn the key turn is typically six and eight are the ones that you really want to mm -hmm. be careful about six being golganeth um, Golganet's the big one that you generally want to be able to get down on curve or, you know, Horn of the Wind Lord is another one sometimes that you want to play. Like there's a bunch of the, those are the two big cards that you generally want to play on six. And then eight is obviously Reno. Um, mm -hmm. so you want to make sure that if you're playing, uh, you're playing a spell either that, that or a card that has overload that you either are aware that if it's go if you're going to lock yourself out of a play that you would want to make on curve just be aware of that and do that mindfully that's really the big thing like whenever you whenever i play an overload card the first thing i say where, where i'm about to play an overload card the first thing i ask myself is what do i want to do next turn and does this screw me out of it mm -hmm. and if it is then you need to understand if you're okay with that or not right because sometimes that's okay right like i mean if if your choices are play Reno next turn or die this turn, and, and but you're going to die this turn, yeah, you, you do the overload and you wait a turn. But it's important that you're at least, like, thinking about that whenever you play an overload card. And you'll get, like, everybody misses that sometimes, but, like, the worst feeling in the world is when you're about to, like, play a card on curve that you need in order to, for a situation, and then you look down and, you're, and your crystals are locked. And you can't actually, and it's not green and, and confused. And it's so easy to happen but that's also another reason for for play your cards like play your overload cards mindfully think about next turn yeah. but if it doesn't mess up your next turn and you might as well play it now play it now because later you might want to play it and you can't because it'll lock you out of your next turn right so if it's yeah. not going to mess up your next turn that's a good reason to play it now you know if you have a backstage bouncer for four that you want to play or a dog holiday for five uh then maybe just put your jam session on your totem on two or something <laughs> yeah. just play it play it now so that uh, you won't be locked out of your future turn where you need something and, it, and in a way so overload can be frustrating for this reason but <laughs> i definitely always found when i played shaman it was good practice for hearthstone in general because it makes you think about your next turn mm -hmm. and that is just a good thing to be doing anyway yeah. It does and take me to another point, though, which is there are only four natural overload cards in the deck, and uh, you're going to be discovering other ones. But that's important because you need to look at what's in your deck list to go for draw on Golgoneth of Thunder, because you don't want to hit that draw three button and go, oh, wait, that drew me one card, right? So you yeah. want to you know, look to see, okay, is this worth it now? If you're going to draw three cards, I pretty much always want a Golgoneth for a draw over the the deal three, gain six, unless I need the healing, right? Or I somehow need the deal 20. I think most of the time, if I'm like, I can Golgoneth draw Lightning Storm and play Lightning Storm, I would rather do that than do the deal three, gain six, because the deck is a little light in the draw department and and so golgoneth can be a, a key way of sort of getting that up there oftentimes i'll do it even for for two cards i just it's it's when it gets to be just draw one where i'm like eh, okay we do something else yeah and Apparently and we... if you really if you really want to take your overload game to the next level the the next level of overload planning is there's something i really want to do in two turns so I should uh -huh. play my overload card now so I get the overload out of the way on a next turn when I'm not going to do anything so that I can do the thing in two turns. So it's it's going to help you. It, it's going to be good just fundamentals, like Magase was saying, with just turn planning because it does force you to think about what you're going to be doing, you know, two turns away and then plan your your cards, plan your, your turns accordingly. Donkey in chat is also pointing out that Firestone... 
Um, if you hover on Golgoneth in the deck tracker window, it'll highlight the overload cards that are left in your deck, which is a very cool feature. So you can see if it's worth it to go for the draw or not. And there are, and there's a lot of uh, cards in here that are, you know, particularly great tech cards in certain matchups. But even if you're not, you know, in that matchup, as we've been saying, just tempo it. Uh, Framester is mainly there to shut down other Highlander decks, but <laughs> it's still, you know, unless you have a better play, it's still a minion. It can still randomly lock them out of a turn later, so uh, it's still a, a good play. But of course, the Framester is really there. Yeah for other Reno decks. And when I first started playing this, I I had looked at the deck. I was like, that's what Framester is there for. I thought about it. I got Framester played against me and I just shot out my Reno without seeing- That's a rite of passage. <laughs> <laughs> so this is your, I did it so you don't have to. You, you may still do it, but if you get Framestered, yeah. pay attention to how many you've drawn mm -hmm. yeah i actually and, and, yeah <laughs> golgoneth will draw the frames so you i will. actually yes. in the mirror one time we both had frames drawn three it's actually even not being against highlander it's one of the higher win rate um, mulligan cards because it, it just gets you there sometimes but yeah i played golgoneth for draw intentionally to like draw the frame things out of my deck even though it was going to get rid of my next turn because I was like, I, I know I'm going to need to Reno. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and like Framester also has a pretty interesting use case against Naga DH in particular because of the way the cast when drawn works. So like when they draw a spell, if it draws the frame, then it just draws whatever the next card is. Right. right? So which might not be a spell. It, it might not be a spell, which might, mess up their turn and if it does by the way they're also overloaded for the following turn so it's important to keep in mind the way the framester works or the way the overload works is as though you played the overload card yourself which is that you the mana crystals are not actually locked until the following turn so it the the frame doesn't actually do anything on the turn they draw it it does something the next turn but with naga dh they generally want that next turn for the reload so mm -hmm. if they if it messes them up, especially on like the first sharpshooter, it can kind of cut their turn off at the knees. If you're you have to be a little bit lucky, obviously. They have to draw that. There's a lot of spells in their deck. So first they have to draw it and then they have to draw like another minion out of it and not have another spell that they can pivot to. But you know, it's it's something that you can do. You don't have much that you're doing against them in the early game anyway. Um, so it's something else that you can do. It's also good against um something like a like a rainbow mage because they're just drawing a lot and so if you can cut down on the mana that they have for their pop-off turn you can kind of buy yourself another couple turns that way um wow. and glacial shard is also in there for things like naga dh and also enrage warrior to keep them getting the value off of the imbued axe because uh glacial shard could go face yep so being able to freeze face is relevant against decks that are very weapon centric like naga dh and like enrage warrior and if you're facing like a paladin though just plop it on one so you have something yeah. to contest their board <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah i mean most of the tech cards like if it's not relevant for that matchup just play it it's fine right like glacial shard on one is fine and if you're if you're not actually going to need it to freeze something specific you don't need to hold it just play it on one it's a two one it's great like trapdoor spider just play it on two you probably play it on two anyway but if you're not actually like against maybe Rainbow Mage, you might save it yeah. to try to to try to to try to bait out a sif because by the time that that they have the sif, they probably don't have too many minions left to play, so <laughs> they can't really get rid of it very easily. And they don't like they are starting to run Heat Wave. Uh, in I saw that in one of the lists that I saw today, which can deal with it. Um, but that's really like the other than like creation. Which, I mean, just the minion would kill it anyway. But they don't really have a lot of natural AoEs in the deck to be able to deal with it. Yeah. And there's plenty of times where you can go, okay, I've been doing all this pressure. I made them play both their creations. Uh, I am worried about Sif killing me. I'm just going to run it out there. It's sort of like a, an Okani with stealth, right? It's just they need a very specific sort of answer to it. And uh, definitely did did a coaching where where we beat a Sif Mage because of Trapdoor Spider. I would not 
keep it against a Sif Mage, um, but it, it can be quite handy. Yeah, because you don't want it early anyway. You want it late. Mm -hmm. it, like, it doesn't do you any good in your opening hand. You're going to hold that for a lot of the game. You're probably playing that on, like, turn, like, 9 or 10 or something mm -hmm. in order to lock out the Sif turn. So you can you have time to draw it. And one thing to keep in mind, if you're facing, like, a priest, uh, a, you know, Renathal reno priest which i saw a surprising number of i think because i my mmr was not yeah. as high <laughs> so i was always seeing the people wanting to make that work you're not outvaluing them you're killing them like that is really yeah you are mid-range we'll say it a mid-range deck you can control <laughs> but you can also tempo yeah and and that's a bad matchup in general like uh, yeah that was is, not control priest is going to be a bad time uh, Re reno Reno, uh, Renathal, Blood, DK is probably going to be a bad time. Um, even if they're not, you know, burning all your stuff. But it's that's probably going to be a bad time for you. Like the control decks where where you can't really... Where your early tempo doesn't do enough and you can't really outvalue them in the late game, that's when you're going to run into trouble with this deck, I think, a lot. But, but like, when... At least early, and, and it seems to still be that way. Like, that's not a lot of the meta. I guess it's becoming a little bit more of the meta thanks to Bunny Hopper. <laughs> <laughs> but but that wasn't really like a lot of the meta it a lot of the meta was paladin was was demon hunter like earlier last like late last week when when this was really coming into the fore it was a lot of paladin a lot of demon hunter uh summon rage warrior like th those are the kinds of decks that you can outlast um anything that's a if something really wants to out control you they can because they're gonna have a more consistent game plan than you do in general Right. I mean, even if they're playing Renathal, they probably still have a more consistent game plan than you do. And just like sometimes, sometimes you just lose because you don't draw the right things. Right. Like sometimes you get into a control game plan and you just don't draw the right tools because you're a Highlander deck. And that just that just happens sometimes. And it's it's unfortunate, but more often than not, you get there. There's lots of discover. And, you know, if you're facing like Dragon Druid is a is a good matchup. That's one where you do want to, you know, plan ahead for that Dragon Golem turn have something that can deal with it but otherwise you know put some pressure uh that's a you know that's a deck that's fairly predictable in certain ways and you can tell whether they yeah. have the ability to do a big dragon golem turn or not so that's really helpful yeah and if they matchup. don't go off on like on like seven mana then by the time that they start really going off with the dragons like they have to they sometimes have to take some time to draw and like if they do that then you can you can clear a lot of their boards with things like you could go like um tumbleweed into reno into yog to for attack for mass hysteria and then you discover another tumbleweed like you can get through a bunch of waves as long as it's not like a as soon as they have seven mana they're on the board and then you can't get rid of them because they're too big that would be like the one time that you do lose to it but you can if it goes a little bit longer before they can really get going you can out you can definitely clear a bunch of wards yeah i've definitely won that way i i have lost the exact way that you said but i have won through they just weren't quite fast enough or maybe i found the primordial wave uh, or was just able to freeze enough things use my health and then start clearing and healing so because you do have a lot of ways to heal use your health as a resource uh, to push tempo instead or get yourself set up so that you can stabilize because uh, you do have a lot of healing and you do have a little bit of armor game too with like Astalor and Reno. So. Yeah. So, you know, I think that that pretty much covers it. I mean, frogs are fun. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, go forth and, and frog people and uh, yeah, it's a, uh, it's a fun deck. It's it's probably the most unique deck to this particular meta. I mean, a lot of I mean, other than Naga DH, I guess. I mean, Naga DH, I guess, is really unique to this meta. But like, it feels different. And and if you do appreciate novelty, like it is going to be a different game every time because you're you're both you're going to draw different things, and your 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 game plan is going to change. And also, like sometimes you just end up discovering your way out of a bad situation, and that's gonna that's gonna be a little different too. So if you're somebody who really appreciates like not every game feeling the same that will not be the problem with this deck you may <laughs> lose because of that sometimes but that will not be a problem with this deck yeah awesome well 
We have many folks we'd like to thank. Check out our thanks section on the website at coinconceded.com, where you can also find our contact info, our show notes, and our Patreon information. You can monetarily support our show at patreon.com slash coinconceded. Join us every week live by following us on Twitch at twitch.coinconceded.com. Join our community chats in our Discord at discord.coinconceded.com. And write into our email at coinconceded at gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter at CoinConceed, as well as like, share, and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash CoinConceed. If you'd like some CC swag, head on over to our shop at shop.coinconceed.com. Big thanks to our producers, Number Theory, Crash, Beef Squatch, David P., Walu, Jeremy T., Bottle Caps, Grumpy Monk, The Burger Club, Kirk Regan, Forgiven One, Enraged Chicken, Grizzly Bear, and The Grand Arcanum. Coin concedes. Uh, well, I have two. One is to Minmon, who's a listener in, in our Discord, who's been doing really, really well this season, was in top 200, and wrote a really fun and informative drum druid guide. It's uh, in the Discord and also linked in the show notes. I, I think you know, he's really specialized in drum druid and had a lot of success with it. And there's a, actually a fair bit of depth to it. So if that's something that you're interested in, I ran into not Minmon because I'm not playing in top 200 right now, but <laughs> a, a, a friend in spirit uh, who managed to get 52 power on the board on turn six against me. So Oof. I did not have primordial that's a win, lot. so I did not yeah. win. <laughs> <laughs> but it, so it, it can be a powerful deck. And if you want to be hipster about your druid choices, check it out. Uh, also, Coin Concede to the Doctor 3 podcast and uh, Dragon Rider and Alkaline Cat, who uh, I was able to guest on Doctor 3 on Tuesday, and the episode came out yesterday, and we talked about the meta, and we also talked about uh, my journey in content creation and Hearthstone and just how being a content creator changes your relationship to the game. So if that's something <laughs> you're interested in, go check that out. And I just appreciated the opportunity to do that. Um, I'm going to quick concede to the uh, the Warcraft Rumble uh, guild, I guess guilds, plural, um, <laughs> and in the in the Discord. Uh, it's been a pretty active community of folks in the Rumble channel, and they've been pretty supportive in that game, too. That's been my my uh, most recent uh, uh, passing time while, uh, you know... It, it, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, while on the toilet you can say yes it. <laughs> yes yes that's been my toilet game yes so uh it's not been good for my phone battery i'll tell you that much but um mm -hmm. but i've been i, I i've been kind of slowly progressing and it's been a good um you know i mean the, the guild's already gotten all the guild things that you get from the guild because the guilds in game can contribute to earning other bonuses and stuff like that Wait. so Oh no! Is there a coin concede guild? And I just didn't. There, realize. there, there are multiple actually because they're capped okay. at fifteen people. Um, yeah, that is, it is pretty tough. I'm in the blizzlet one. I'm sorry. Oh, okay, that's okay. <laughs> I mean, there, there's, there, it's, it's, there's, it's not a competition thing. It's and there's not a lot of room in them anyway, so it, it works out. But yeah, it's uh, but the uh, the 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 Rumble channel has been very supportive and and helping people figure out what the hell is. What the hell to do because that game could be overwhelming if you're not actually doing things and it there's a lot of opportunities to do the wrong thing in that game and then end up getting yes. set back for a long time so helping people not do that is a big thing in that game mm -hmm. so um so yeah so coin concede to all of them yeah i'm gonna try not to think about the hooks they've gotten in my wallet for that game. Oh, I, I've I've uh, done a couple of in-app purchases myself. Yes, I've I've uh, not I've not paid more than five dollars. Well, I paid for the twenty dollar ArcLight thing. Sure, but right. other than that, yeah, that that's just that's just unlocking the full game, uh -huh. effectively. But I haven't done any more than five dollar bundles since then. So I we'll see. Definitely have, but. Uh... <laughs> It's a good game. I, I enjoy it. Yeah. And, you know, maybe at some point I'll be able to cast for it. But my coin and seeds are going to be first to Clark, even though it didn't end up well for me. He gave me some good advice for Nature Shaman. And I realized that it is too much of a heart of a cards deck for me to play. Also, my <laughs> APM sucks because I, I, I realized when he he picked off of a flow rider and it was between like crash of nature and lightning reflexes and he picked lightning reflexes and i was like really reflexes not crash there and he's like oh oh yeah reflexes like yes you don't know what you're gonna get but 
like because both discovers it's going to cost zero you 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 always take lightning reflexes when you can get it because it's what like enables you to combo it will reduce the the crashes oh, potentially yeah. and that's find you all yeah. kinds of things and i was just like oh i'm gonna have a bad time with this deck because, <laughs> uh, because i want the certainty i'm like yes we crash a thunder them and they die and lightning reflex is like we do stuff and like yeah there there are games where you're just like well i'm dead next turn so let's see if they're dead and oh look yeah. they're dead watching yeah. him play this deck he's got a guide for it on youtube go check it out uh he's yeah. convinced it's the best deck in the game presently I he's he's i that. mean he's convinced that any deck that he's winning with is the best deck in the well, game though sure. so you know uh, i mean i, I love clark to death don't get me wrong but he, he yeah. if, if he if he's got a positive win rate with whatever deck that's the best deck in the game at the moment so i definitely <laughs> see where he's coming from and it's really cool and the wins feel great and there were a bunch of games that i was like oh i screwed that up and now i'm dead uh, <laughs> so and then uh, Queen and Seed to Celestalon, who posted that I didn't, didn't realize there was a patch for Baldur's Gate, which I finished recently, and now I'm no longer done with the game because there's there's new endgame content in terms of epilogues for, for various characters. I'm going to have to replay the end of the game to see the epilogues. And also, they made an honor mode, which means I'm going to have to do that. Honor mode is... Even more challenging than the tactician difficulty, and uh, I believe I don't know if it's like if you die you're dead or you only get one save file. It's something like that. It is the hardcore version for for Larian games, and I am excited and terrified for how that's going to go for me. Uh, I, I guess I should also it. coin concede to Larian games for not putting their game on sale during the Steam sale. So that I didn't buy it and then feel conflicted about not having time to play it until I'm done with all the Trails games. So thank you for that. Thank you for making that particular decision much easier for me. It's all right. You'll get them next year when they have another big patch adding, like, you know, even more subclasses or higher level spells, which I think they're looking at and, like, tearing their hair out on how they can adapt them to the game without it breaking. But, uh, and then my last coin concede is... Um, to my mother who drove me to the er earlier in the week because i was having really horrible chest pain i'd been up you know most of the night with leah just dealing with it and and like w wondering if i was gonna make it because <laughs> my, my dad uh had died of a heart attack so we're very uh, you know take these things pretty seriously so uh, ended up being i mean i guess not nothing, but nothing serious is uh, something that basically once they rule all the serious stuff out, they're like, it's probably this. It's called costochondritis. It's inflammation. So I just needed to take ibuprofen regularly to get that to go down. It was probably caused by two weeks earlier, all the coughing I was doing. Um, That'll happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but it's really nice to have my mom live close enough that I can say like, yeah. hey. I can't pull <laughs> Rachel away from the baby. Can you drive me to the ER at six in the morning? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, we're, and glad you're okay, because that's yeah. the most important part, you know. Yeah. And that you're not actually dying, so that that is a good thing, because that would be bad. Yeah. Well, so but that's gonna do it for us for this week. So until next time, keep calm and summon big frogs. And if you see us on ladder, coin concede. Coin concede. Coin concede. All right. Who under two hours? Under, under two, two hours. Look, hours. At, look at us. I was not <laughs> expecting that. I thought we'd be here till nine thirty. Yeah, no, there's a lot of news, but we moved through it quickly, so that was that was good. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and I stopped recording on the thing. I stopped recording on the other thing. The thing with the thing. <laughs> all the things yeah. i was all trying to things. like channel hat i was thing. like we're gonna say the battlegrounds really fast <laughs> yes. uh, and it looks like uh dawn is is streaming so we can go oh, rate her right. yeah uh, just as well we're done i took a unisom or half a unisom uh before we started in the hopes that i would actually be tired by the end of the show because <laughs> i've been having trouble falling asleep early um which is bad because then once i get the monitor i've like only been asleep for three hours by the time oh yeah oh my god it's not good 
Okay. It's hard to well, transition that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to go raid Dawn. So say hi to her. Thanks, everybody, for coming out. Um, we will Thank be you. recording Wednesday, not Thursday, next week. So uh, mark your calendars accordingly. We'll send out some notifications. Uh, but thanks, everybody, for coming out. And uh, have a great night. Bye. Bye.